Hey everyone, welcome into Tivoli Zoo. Today is a halfway episode in between 15 and 16, and that's because there's a brand new DLC. It is the Africa pack, and I cannot wait to show you guys this pack. Um, probably my favorite uh, so far. Definitely in the top two, probably along with the uh, aquatic DLC. There's The animals are fantastic, and the uh, the scenery pieces are great as well. So right off the bat, um, we'll uh, take a little bit closer look at this in a minute, but you can see the uh, former warthog exhibit is now an African penguin exhibit, and this is actually a part of the, uh, the Denver Zoo. Zoo's master plan. So now that we have these animals in game, um, I just took the uh, the habitat that Wyatt did for us a couple of episodes ago and made some changes to um, accommodate the uh, African penguins. So anyway, we will, uh, like I said, take a closer look at the animals in a minute. I do want to start though by showing off the uh, the scenery pieces that are in the game. All right, so like I said, the new DLC comes with a ton of new scenery, um, which is very welcome after the uh, the last DLC was only animals. So um, really, really pleased with what they put in here, especially the functionality. So almost every single piece is recolorable, which is uh, fantastic because most people I know are uh, are using the pieces you know, sometimes in the way that they're intended, but most often um, in creative and unique ways that uh, having the ability to recolor these all together is uh, fantastic. So um, first, the thing that I found really interesting is now we have these emissive window panels. So these are actually, uh, these light up at night. So if we go to nighttime view here, you'll see they, uh, they put off a, a light hue. So those are awesome for any custom windows you're working on and you want there to be a, a light source coming from. Um, those are a great little addition for uh, customization in the game. So uh, that is very welcome to see that kind of uh, attention to detail uh, as they continue to give us more scenery to work with. Um, really one of the, the stars of this DLC are these um, ceramic tile sets. I mean, they're just so well done. Um, you know, like I said, they're completely recolorable. This one has four different colors you can choose from. Uh, even this large one here. One thing that I like is that you can kind of, uh, if you messed around with the colors, probably in there, you can give yourself a really nice sort of terracotta set as well. Um, you know, and you can do that with all of these here, or even uh, just that one if you want, didn't want all these black details in there. Um, but tons of versatility is going to be available by utilizing these. And look at these individual pieces they gave us too. Um, so you've got a really tiny individual ceramic tile, a bar, a set of two, a set of four. And again, those are uh, fully recolorable. All four of those can be a unique color. Um, Coming in here, they've given us a ton more of these plaster pieces, which is awesome because like like me, I'm sure a lot of you use them for, um, you know, generic walls, sort of um, things for backstage, sometimes a uh, substitute for concrete, things like that, but uh, also came with some nice decorative pieces as well. So you've got uh, two new arches, a uh, new door as well with a little individual door handle here. So this is also going to have a ton of different uh, uses that people will find creative ways to um, to utilize in their zoo. You've got a cu couple of uh, shop surrounds here, which I've never, um, I've never actually used these for that intended purpose, but uh, there's always ways you can kind of sink pieces in and just utilize some of these edges uh, creatively. You've got some um, curved short fences as well. And then uh, this metal bracket here, as well as a new uh, picnic canopy. And I did not put them in here, but there are, uh, there are, we filter here, uh, new tables, which I don't have a path down, so you're not gonna be able to see it without the highlight, but new tables and new bins as well, and a new bench. So those are also included in the DLC. Um, and then these pieces here are uh, really cool. You've got uh, these painted wood beams, again, fully recolorable. So a ton of different uses for these. I can see people utilizing these for uh, custom trees, for hand railings, 
Also welcome is the uh, the one meter length piece, uh, and then you know just having that shorter piece is great. Like I said, for fences, and um, you could even use it for like custom wooden ladders, things like that. And then you get into here, and you get these huge, huge uh, plaster set here. So the the pieces are a little bit big, like these ones here. Um, th these three sets of round pieces are a little bit big for my liking, but you've also got tons of options here of these much smaller pieces, which you can use these for anything from walls to concrete to um, again custom tile floors, things like that. Uh, so tons of versatility there. You got two additional beams. And then we come into the gridded wall set and again uh, fully fleshing out the arches. Um, we've got some new wall options as well. And then um, there is, I think there was one other wall. Did I miss it? I thought I filtered all of these out here. Uh, let's look here. Arches, decorations. Maybe it's a roof piece. No, I could have sworn there were. Um, yeah, here, let me look here. So here's one of their blueprints if you take a look um, that's utilizing a lot of these pieces. So I don't know where I missed this piece. Um, it's, it is a gridded piece, so you can see this goes into the set here. I don't know how I missed that one, but this is where you would utilize, um, or where they intend for you to utilize these wooden beams is, uh, is in that set there. But again, tons of other options um, for that set. And then you can see the additional wall pieces here, uh, along with um, these glass panels, which are awesome. And then another surround for a shop there. Uh, these are roof uh, detail pieces. You can see they've utilized them here. Um, you've got these uh, African steps as well. So these are all individual pieces, which again are going to be uh, very useful in many, many creative ways. And then these are the window frames. And then this is a set I'm really excited about, these wooden arbor beams, again, fully recolor recolorable. So just another uh, beam set that you can utilize for um, various types of structures in your zoos. Um, lots of versatility here, especially these uh, arbor pieces, which will be uh, really helpful when it comes to gardening or creating like a, a little uh, seating area with shade and uh, an arbor in there as well. So lots of, again, flexibility in those pieces. And then if we make our way back over here, we've got more ropes now. And the benefit is these are fully recolorable as well. And they also come with a, um, a tassel and then a little knot piece there. Another section of lattice work, a little bit different than uh, the pieces over there, but definitely something that can be used for a multitude of, uh, of different things. This new fountain, which is absolutely incredible. Um, the water, actually, you've got a built-in uh, effect for that fountain, so it really does a nice job of just lightly cascading over the side there. It would be nice to see that special effect on its own because some of the water effects are a little, uh, a little bit intense for things like fountains and stuff like that. Um, another fountain piece here. This piece is just a small fence post, uh, which I think they probably intend for you to utilize with uh, with that there. But again, it's recolorable. You can use it for a ton of different things. Uh, a new planter as well with a lot of the mosaic tile. And then lots of new statue pieces. So you've got a fennec fox in an Egyptian style. Uh, you've got your African penguins. A smaller fennec fox that comes with the reward of unlocking the animal. Um, this mosaic African penguin, and then you've got some more signs here in the Egyptian style with the uh, fennec fox, the meerkat, the beetle, and then a mosaic uh, for the white rhino. More uh, wall pieces here that you can adhere to the walls, another uh, statuary in an Egyptian style. And then these are really cool. They're a little big um, for my taste, but they're, you know, there's no reason you couldn't utilize these in the zoo. They're really, really cool statues, I think. 
um, but probably not something I'll utilize in, in Tivoli. Uh, these are another welcome addition, these small plates here, which again, these pieces are fully recolorable, the metallic ones are not. And then this is that individual door handle uh, that I had over here on this uh, door. So um, that is the bulk of the scenery pieces. Um, one thing that is incredible that I'm pretty sure comes with the, the generic update and is not a part of the DLC. I'm not sure. When I filter for the DLC, these don't show up. So I'm pretty sure these get included with the, uh, the base update, which are these mesh fences. A lot of us have been clamoring for these for a while, so thank you so much Frontier for including these in this update. Um, now we no longer have to use just the barrier uh, walls to get these uh, chain link fences here. So you've got a couple different options. Small gate, um, they get a little bit larger in size. And then you've got one here. Oh, by the way, these are fully recolorable. Uh, the frame and the mesh itself, same here. These are fully recolor recolorable. Um, and those come in the same sizes. So you've got a, a one meter, a two meter, and a four meter. And then you've also got options. This one is a half meter, which is amazing. Um, tons of different ways to utilize this, especially with netting for, uh, you know, exhibits that require netting to be above. Like um, I was at the Denver Zoo recently and I noticed that the, the tiger exhibit has nets. Um, in some areas like completely covering the, the habitat. So um, great use for getting weird angles and curves and things like that with the with this mesh piece here. Um, and then they just go up in size um, and you have different um, dimensions as well. One thing that is a little tricky about these is if you um, happen to be building at just the wrong sort of angle or looking into the sunlight, they are a little bit hard to see. Um, they will disappear on you. So building with them is gonna be a little bit tricky, but that's okay. They are an incredible addition. Um, so thrilled to have these in the game. So thank you Frontier for, uh, for listening to that feedback. Um, Coming back in here, I completely forgot about these. So these are just additional decorative details. You've got um, an onion dome here. This is uh, a sculpture piece as well. And then you've got tons of options now for um, different columns that uh, these are all toppers. You have different uh, widths and heights as well. Um, Personally, I'll probably be utilizing the, the smaller ones, but uh, again, a ton of flexibility in how you want to utilize these pieces, and all of them are uh, fully recolorable, along with these wall decorations as well. So um, again, more flexibility is incredible. Uh, these are North African plaster cones in three different sizes. Uh, the coolest, you'll see this in his videos today, but um, I got to see a little bit in advance, uh, even showed me some of the, uh, the ways he's utilizing this in an exhibit, and he just used it as almost like rocks, and they look incredible. So again, tons of uh, versatility and flexibility for something like this too. Um, also with the uh, pack, you get additional foliage. So we've got uh, some new tree sets. And uh, this is called the fever tree. I really love, love, love the structure of these trees, especially this one here. Um, my only wish is that, and, I'm, and I've never heard of this tree, so I don't know how accurate it is or not. My only wish is that they were maybe a little bit less yellow, um, a little more tan, because I feel like we would get uh, more versatility out of them inside of our zoos. You'd find a, a wider range of uses for them. But um, yeah, the structure of them is absolutely incredible. They're beautiful trees. I uh, just wish they were, uh, like I said, had a little more flexibility in terms of usage since they're so yellow. But um, you know, certainly not going to complain too much about additional foliage options in the game. You also get an African oil palm in three different sizes, as well as uh, a doom palm um, in three different sizes. And then a dragon's blood tree, which all of these are things I've never, I've never heard of. So um, I don't know how accurate uh, they are to the real thing. Um, I've looked at some pictures and they, you know, like most of the foliage in the game, they're really, really well done. Uh, you've also got a uh, quiver tree in three different sizes. And then finally a sausage tree in uh, three different sizes as well. Um, the other thing that I think people are going to really geek out over is this new uh, grass piece. You got three different sizes. The, it's incredibly well done. Um, it's going to be really, really great to have this for your habitats, especially around the edges and things like that. Most people, like I know Wyatt has been using um, 
the a couple of the bushes that are in the game to sort of achieve this effect. So uh, I'm sure he's going to go back and redo a lot of stuff with this grass. But um, it's really, really well done. I mean, you can even put together just a quick little, you know, a quick little landscaping scene really easily with uh, by utilizing a lot of this stuff. Um, and it looks really, really good. If we uh, then paint the terrain here. Yeah, so, I mean, just that little teeny bit looks amazing. This is some of the best foliage I think uh, we've had added to the game. So I will be heavily utilizing these. The trees I probably won't have as much use for in my particular project, but certainly if you, um, you know, have a more arid climate for your zoo or are going for just a, a realistic habitat for these animals, um, you've got plenty of options to work with. So, um, again, couldn't be happier with the uh, the scenery pieces. Um, very, very welcome additions to the game. Lots of versatility, lots of flexibility to uh, to use in the zoo. So, uh, let's check out the animals real quick. All right. So first out of the gate is the southern white rhinoceros, and this guy is awesome. Um, I'm so thrilled that that we have this in the game now. This is an animal that is intended to be in to, uh, the Denver Zoo master plan. Right on cue, it wouldn't be a Tivoli Zoo episode without someone taking a dump, so um, perfect timing. But uh, the, uh, the Denver Zoo master plan does call for a rhinoceros to be a part of the African Savanna exhibit. Um, so now I'm thrilled to have this uh, as a part of the exhibit, and thankfully I didn't have to uh, completely build a new habitat for him. Just was able to put him in. I did make some subtle changes to uh, to this area, which I'm much more happy with now. Now, if we back out a little bit, you can see this used to just be um, sort of a drainage ditch area and I decided to make it another uh, watering hole for them and was able to uh, to hide in the little mud uh, wallowing pit there, which uh, the rhino and the water buffalo actually do use. And um, I just think it's it's a better use of this area. It opens it up more. If you, you remember, there's sort of a big rock wall here that you couldn't really see into the exhibit unless you went up these stairs, but I'm just uh, much more happy with how this looks now. I think um, it, it lends itself to how the rest of the exhibit is, where you have lots of different sight lines into the savanna um, and can uh, can view the animals. So let's get a little bit, let's see if I can get a little bit closer to this guy without freaking the game out. Yeah, so again, really really well done i mean i'm certainly no animal expert but i think uh this guy looks terrific and the uh, animations as usual are amazing um especially watching him use the mud pit was uh was really cool to see down there um but yeah that's uh probably my favorite animal out of the dlc but uh, just really really cool so let's uh, go take a look at the, um, well, first of all, I was planning on implementing the, uh, the mirror cats into the savannah, which I think I'm still going to do. I'm just trying to figure out a way because they would need to be separated off from the rest of the exhibit. So I think I might either do it, um, hop out here. So I think I might do that either in this area here, um, potentially might sacrifice this lawn seating area and do them here. Um, or the other two options would be um, doing something in here and then uh, getting rid of some of this grassy area here and doing uh, an exhibit here. So this is the one I'm kind of leaning towards um, just because I know they don't need a ton of space. And you've already got a nice little elevated viewing platform. Um, it'd be cool to have like a glass wall here for the uh, the train as it comes around and they could see into the, the meerkat exhibit as well. Um, as you know, if you've played the game, dealing with the uh, the barrier doors is a bit of a challenge, so it's going to take some work to try to figure out. But I do want to implement them into the uh, to the savanna. I think it would be cool to have that as an addition to uh, to what's already here. So uh, let's take a look. Um, real quick, we'll look at the the meerkats. I've got the meerkat and the fennec fox back here, just so you can see what they look like. So um, here are the meerkats. Take a look. 
which again, these are also really, really well done. And it's really cool to watch them do their, uh, their digging animation into the ground. Um, there's, you know, once they go underground, you can't really see anything. There's nothing, you know, it's not like you see a visual burrow or anything like that, but, um, it's just still really cool to see them, uh, have that feature. Uh, the DLC also comes with the, I'm pretty sure this is new, that might be existing for the Anteater, but I, I thought that was a new um, addition to the game, was this little uh, Anteater hill here, uh, or not, uh, excuse me, Termite Mound there. Um, so you can see that one guy, oh, I thought he was digging. Um, let's see if we can try to find one of them to, to dig underground. Um, I guess not, but anyway, it's they're they're awesome. I, there we go. I definitely want to see uh, these guys added to the African savanna at some point. So let me know where you think they should go um, out of those options that I, I pointed out, um, and if you have any ideas for how to kind of uh, implement them, because I feel like they will need their own structure as well for um, uh, for the keepers to to watch them and take them off exhibit and things like that. Uh, then we have the fennec fox which i probably will not be utilizing in the zoo um, but they are again really well done this entire dlc is uh is fantastic i think like i said it's probably my favorite so far um even though i won't be utilizing all the animals it's just really 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 well done with the uh the scenery and the animals um, as well so let's go wrap up here with the african penguins So yeah, like I said, the Denver Zoo Master Plan does call for this area to be turned into, which originally when this um, whole exhibit opened, there was meerkats and warthogs in this area, and they um, have since not been there. I think for even last year, the, the habitat itself was just empty in anticipation of making these changes. It's currently under construction now and will house the uh, the African penguins in this area. So um, added this um, sun awning because it was in some of the concept art I saw, and this was just from the work uh, workshop. But um, let's go ahead and pop this up for a second here, just so you can get a better view at the, uh, the habitat. So it was a little bit tricky to get them to do the diving animation, which you can see they're kind of tweaking out at the top there, but um, they do dive and, and go for the fish. Um, I had to, originally I had a lot more rock work in here, but it was preventing them from diving. So something about these uh, aquatic rocks they don't interact well with, which kind of sucks. I think the hitboxes on these should be toned down a little bit um, because they, uh, like I said before, there was still a lot of room, but they just had a really hard time uh, managing the, uh, the rocks on the edges of this pool. So. Um, unfortunately, I had to sacrifice looks for function in that um, in that regard, and now they all seamlessly dive down here. So one thing I did add, uh, which I think is a pretty cool touch for the uh, utilization of the screens, is since there's no underwater viewing, uh, I did a little recording here of them going for the fish, and you can see what the rock work used to look like. But um, it was weird. I, they like did it once and then I could never get them to dive ever again, but just did a little quick video and put it on loop here. So it looks like, you know, as people come up, they're looking at the, the web camera underneath the water and they can watch the penguins dive for their food since there's no true underwater viewing area. Um, but I love how basically this is the same habitat they just repurposed it for the the penguins and it's i think it's cool because i've definitely seen zoos do that in the past where not much changes uh, but there's an entirely new animal species um, and maybe they've adapted it a little bit in this case obviously a, a big pool of water more uh, concrete and rock work along the edges and then uh, one thing I really love too is how much they utilize this little den over here um, so you get a great view into this window of them sort of utilizing these beds. Um, and again, the, the penguins are, are awesome. Uh, really, really cool. And I love how many there are in this exhibit. I've got close to 20, which I've asked and I think um, isn't completely unreasonable from what actually exists out there. Um, but yeah, now this exhibit is uh, fully dedicated to the African penguins 
and I think is a, uh, a nice transition from the Predator Ridge sort of into, uh, into the coastal exhibit over here. Um, and it makes sense from even a function standpoint of water treatment and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that is the, uh, the gist of this update. Not a ton. Uh, most of what I've been working on is covered up over here. It's going to be the start of the Toyota Elephant Passage. Um, but uh, did have time to, like I said, work on um, improving the savanna a little bit, the African savanna, uh, to accommodate the white rhino and then uh, get the uh, penguins in there. And then again, let me know what you think where I should put the, uh, the meerkats in here. If I should use this area, uh, sacrifice this grassy seating area for the shows or, um, you know, put something in here or something in here. Again, keeping in mind that they'll probably need an individual structure uh, for the zookeepers to uh, to take care of them. So uh, would love your feedback there. I'm open to uh, the different ideas, but I for sure want to get them into the uh, to the savannah somehow, some way. So uh, in episode 16, I'm hoping to have a ton more done on the uh, Elephant Passage exhibit. Um, I want the main structures in place. I want to try to get most of the terrain work done and the fencing done. Um, and then it will be a matter of just detailing from there. So hopefully we've got some uh, big updates for you uh, in episode 16. But I uh, really appreciate you guys um, stopping by and watching today. I hope you all enjoy the DLC. I highly recommend picking it up. Um, as you know, in the past, I've, I've never shied away if I thought you could, you know, depending on your likes and dislikes, if you needed a DLC or could pass on it. But this is one that I think is a, uh, a must own. So I hope you, um, you guys pick it up and I hope you enjoy the new animals and the new scenery. And I look forward to seeing the, the creative ways that everyone utilizes these new pieces. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode.